Thank you, sir. I'm dreadfully sorry. How about this? The Christmas season will be very busy, and I'd very much prefer not to buy a new engine until after. Once you're repaired, we can give you an extremely light load until Christmas is over. That way, you will have some time to give some forethought to this decision. Of course, sir. I'll be willing to pitch in a little bit. Besides, Christmas always gets me in a jolly mood. The announcement of Edward's retirement came as a massive shock to everyone. Everyone knew he was old, yet not once did it occur to them that Edward would quit so suddenly. He was repaired just as the first snow began to fall on the island of Sodor. He returned to a very quiet Tidmouth Sheds. So, is it true? I'll make that decision after Christmas, but I think I am going to go through with it. It's a real shame. You're just gonna stop suddenly after over a century? Most engines don't last 30 years, let alone a century and two decades. Edward then chuckled, much to the other engine's surprise. Besides, aren't I just a bunch of old iron? I better give up and be preserved before it's too late. Gordon hissed angrily. You listen here, Edward. We were much younger and more ignorant in those days. But you showed us time after time that you were not old iron, but an iron fist. You may not be as physically strong as the bigger engines, but by God, mentally, you are the strongest of them all. Here, here! Aye! And the engines all blew their whistles loudly. Edward was stunned. Gordon had never praised Edward like that before. That being said, if Edward wishes to retire from regular service, and by God has he bloody well earned the right to do so. You, my dear engine, deserve a good rest. If you leave the sheds though, we will miss you quite a bit. Are you kidding? And be replaced by, I don't know, some engine from Africa? There's no way in hell I'm leaving Tidmouth Sheds. The engines were thrilled, but they were sad at the same time. They were quite fond of their old friend. Edward soon found out that the passengers were quite fond of him too. Better get a picture of him. He may be retiring soon. Such a shame. I like this engine. He's been around since my great-grandfather's age. He's a real trooper, this fellow. This struck a chord with Edward. Despite his struggles, his passengers were always there to cheer him up and brighten his day, and he would miss their friendly faces. The coaches were also sad, but Edward assured them that they would be looked after. One day, after pulling a train, Edward decided to have a rest in the yard. He noticed Neil was resting there too. Hello, do you mind if I join you? My old friend Edward, of course not. We're all entitled to a rest. Though I guess you'll be able to do a lot of that quite soon. I've heard everything. Yes, I'm afraid that accident really gave me a realization that I'm not who I used to be. Let's be honest, Edward. This railway seems to have accidents all the time. It's a miracle the Fat Controller hasn't been booted out or sued. Everyone has accidents, my dear Edward. Yes, but when you don't have one for almost a century and then suddenly it happens, you just feel like you failed. Failed? Pah! If you think one accident is a big enough failure to make you quit, then you really don't know what failure is. Maybe you're right, but that's not the point. I'm just a very old engine. Let me tell you something, Edward. I know very well that I'm old, and I initially did have an extremely light workload when I arrived back on Sodor. But you know what? It was bloody boring! So I went to the Fat Controller and demanded more things to do. And, if you haven't noticed lately, I'm one of the main shunting engines on the island now, 
and I pull actual trains. Now, yes, I cannot take a full workload, but they'll have to drag me off the tracks before I retire. Hey, that's my quote. Yes, it is. Yet you completely did a 180 turn on it. You should not quit, Edward. The Fat Controller is a very reasonable man, and he can make accommodations. Yes, he did offer to decrease my workload. I would take that offer if I were you. Don't let one failure put an end to your usefulness. Just something to think about. But when you have a failure after almost a century of no failures, that is proving something. And Edward felt even more unsure about himself. But the next day, Edward took his mind off the subject as it was Christmas Eve. All the other engines were very busy with passengers and freight. Percy found the mail train very heavy with all the last minute letters and parcels for Christmas. Do you need help with the mail, Percy? No, but thanks for offering. I'm almost done. Boy, I almost envy you. With heavy loads like this, I wouldn't mind retiring either. Oh, now don't you get into that talk. You're young and strong. By like four years. Oh, right. I forgot. Come on, stupid guard. The signal's green. We're late. Shh. He'll hear you. Very well. Away we go. Be careful on the way back. It's supposed to start snowing again this evening. Only a little bit. I'm the big express engine. Snow never bothers me. About an hour later, the first flakes started to gently fall from the sky. However, it soon got more intense and became much more heavier than was expected. Everyone was very surprised. It was snowing so much that the tracks disappeared in almost the blink of an eye. I want it made clear that every engine is to wear a snowplow immediately. That only seems logical. I think I'll stay here for a while and wait for the snow to die down. That's a good idea. I wonder how Gordon's getting on. Oh, well, what do you know? Come on, driver. We must get back to Knapford before we're snowed under. You know, if Gordon's able to get through, then I'm sure I can make it back home. Look out! Oh no! Gordon braked as hard as he could, but he slid helplessly on the icy rails. Oh no! The tunnel's blocked at both sides. It'll take a long time to dig Gordon out. We can't just stay here though. The passengers will get cold. But it will take way too long to get the buses out here, especially in this weather. Look! It's Edward! Oh no! What happened? Gordon's stuck. It'll be a long time to dig him out, and we need to keep the passengers warm. Hmm. I could take them back to Tidmouth. Whoa, boy. This is a very heavy train. I can manage. It's just a Tidmouth. Besides, the passengers need our help. Everyone agreed, and they coupled Edward to the back of Gordon's coaches. They then uncoupled Gordon from the train, and Edward, with much puffing of steam, set off. The train was very heavy, but Edward struggled on, wheel turn after wheel turn, until he reached Tidmouth. The Fat Controller was still there, and Edward's crew explained what had happened. I'm afraid we can't fit all those passengers inside the station, and the roads are snowed under and it will take hours to clear them up. And there's no other way by rail. Actually, wait a minute. There is! The branch line, of course. It goes straight to Knapford. Will the line hold the weight of the coaches? The coaches, yes. An engine strong enough to pull them? I don't know. Besides, Henry is back at the sheds, and he's probably the only engine strong enough to pull that train. Uh, well, then I'll do it, sir. Oh no, my dear Edward. You should not be giving this heavy burden. I saw you struggle to get here. And besides, the others are too far away. You'd have no one to help you. 
It's Christmas Eve, sir, and this is the last train. We must get them back before morning. They will freeze to death. <sighs> You're right. I suppose you could try. No, I'm going to do it, not to try it. The points were all set, and Edward gathered all the strength that he could. I failed once, but I will not this time. The first coach moving helped to start the second, and the second helped the third, and the third helped the fourth, then the fifth, the sixth. Come on! Come on! Easy, boy! You're doing well! Edward did not think so. He moved slowly onto the branch line, gasping with exhaustion, but he soon found his puff. Slowly but surely, the train gained speed over the icy rails. Well done, boy! You've got them! You've got them! And he listened happily to Edward's steady beat as he forged slowly but surely ahead. The passengers were anxious. They wondered if Edward would be able to get them home without breaking down. Edward was going no more than 30 miles per hour, and the usually short journey seemed like an eternity. But Edward struggled on. He would not give up. Eventually, his driver could see the entrance to a familiar yard. Look! There's Knapford! We've done it! Edward was so relieved, yet so exhausted, he couldn't speak. With every wheel turn, the station got closer and closer, until finally, Edward rolled triumphantly into the station, just as he did over 50 years prior on that stormy night. The passengers erupted with cheer. You fantastic engine! You've saved Christmas! Edward had never felt so proud in his life. There was nothing he loved more than praise from his loyal passengers. That's Edward, isn't it? I heard he may retire soon. If that's the case, then he went out with a bang. The weather cleared up just in time for Christmas Day. Bells were ringing, and despite the heavy snow, everyone was having a very Merry Christmas. As he always did, the Fat Controller came that morning to see the engines. He hadn't even spoken a word when Edward rolled forward. I have something I would like to say. Uh, very well, go on. There has been a lot of talk about me retiring from regular service. And I must let you know that I have made a decision. I see. And? I am old, and not what I used to be. My failure with the troublesome trucks proved that very clearly. I cannot handle a large workload anymore. But if you think I'm gonna do nothing for most of the day, sitting on my big fat a um, I mean tender, then you can think again! Sh so you're not retiring? I realized something last night. I realized that failure happens to everyone, old and new. Everybody makes mistakes. It happens all the time. But you should never lose sight of your goal. I had one accident with the trucks, and I thought I was useless. But saving the passengers last night proved that you weren't. Exactly. It doesn't matter how many times you fall. What matters is getting the strength to get up again. And you know what? I was so focused on the negative that I forgot all about the positives in my life. I forgot how much the passengers bring joy to it. And if I simply quit, I would not get that joy much anymore. And not to mention all my wonderful friends here on the railway. I would not trade that in for anything. Basically, sir, what I'm trying to say is that whilst I will need a reduction in my workload, you'll have to drag me off the tracks before you see me quit. And I support your decision 100%. The engines cheered and whistled for their old friend. Edward might be, as James said a long time ago, a lot of old iron. But remember, iron, while it may rust, is never meant to break. Just like Edward's spirit. <laughs>
you two. It's time for work. Got you there, didn't I? <laughs>